Um, we are currently supporting the um, Beyond Blue for aid for depression and anxiety. It's a very good cause, and all money donated is very much appreciated, Sorry, whether you donate oh, online or donate oh, to yes. us in person. But it might be at 60 hertz, I'm not sure. We have passed the $2,000 mark, but I bet you all, viewers and chat, so that we can reach... To the I'm two challenging you to reach $2,500. So I think we can all do it. And just a reminder that we have a few donation incentives for Station 2. Um, tomorrow, coming up, we have Super Metroid. So we have the bid war between killing or saving the animals. Currently, we have no, um, no donations for either. So if you, have a ver if you have a strong opinion, get that in. We also have donations for Vex, um, the Glitch so Showcase, and the Hop and Drop minigame. Neither of those have been met yet, so get those donations in. And we have a few for Station 1 tonight. Um, the extra stage for Toho 10. Uh, replacing a runner with guest for Lego Star Wars. And the Mario Kart 8 character selection. Where currently Waluigi is winning. But if you would like to see DK, Rosalina, Link or Roy. I advise you to get those donations in. I'll have a game video off to the next menu screen. Well, yeah, but I think it'll be in 4x3 res until I actually go into BBS, because BBS is ported weirdly. Okay, no, that's the resolution it'll be in, so just set it up with that, I guess. That'll probably be easy. Uh, I'm not sure. It will be, yeah. If it's 60 hertz now, it will be. There's some like textures at the top left if you want to just move the video slightly to cut that out. Now there's a green line on the bottom, so... Perfect. Okay, numpad one, here's the timer. Like, numpad one, numpad one. Yep. Uh, make sure you're licking the microphones. Ready to go. Okay, I think we're ready. Test. Okay, good.
I'll just check to make sure this is the right profile. Yeah, it is. Wait, you just tell me one? Alright, so, on go. Three, two, one, yeehaw. <laughs> Let's go. Alright, so, this is Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep. It's the Final Mix HD edition. Um, so, yeah, the, the reason the title isn't there fully... The reason the title isn't there fully is just because it's a really long title. Um, so, one of the key differences between Final Mix HD, which is on the 2.5 remix for PS3, and the other Final Mix, which was on PSP, is the way Level 1 works. Basically, I'm going to be putting on an ability called Zero EXP really early on into the run, and that's going to cause me to do more damage everywhere. You could grind, uh, theoretically, for levels and do more damage, but it just works out way slower due to how many levels you would have to get. So there's pretty much no grinding as a result of that, and that's really nice. So starting off, we have orbs. The main thing I'm trying to do with orbs is hit them into each other, because then they both blow up, but... Failing that, you just combo them until they die. So there's not really too much to talk about here. Uh, there is a bit of RNG in what the orbs do. They have different patterns and what my party members do being the more significant part of it. Because uh, party members in any fight are completely random in terms of the way they interact with stuff. So there I, I got a snipe, as we call it. So that shows off, you know, hitting them into each other, they both die. Um, there we go, so that's orbs. Uh, those weren't too great, but again, it's a very random fight, so there's not too much I can do. So here I'm just gonna have a few cutscene skips. Uh, there are a lot of those in the run. It's kind of annoying because they don't group the cutscenes together into one skip like they do in, say, Kingdom Hearts 2. But it's better than not being able to skip the cutscenes at all, so... The other notable thing is that, because it's on a Blu-ray disc, the loads are actually quite long. Yeah, and another thing with loads, specifically for 2.5, the same thing doesn't happen with 1.5 uh, HD Remix. But for whatever reason, with 2.5, there are like three different types of loads. Uh, you can get slim loads, super slim loads, or fat loads, depending on your PS3. But for whatever reason, some slims will load like fats, and some slims will load like super slims, and some super slims will load like slims. So you really need to get a PS3 that has the right loads and kind of get lucky to do that. So I'm going to dip into the menu here, outside the world, because I'm going to go into a fight the moment I enter the world, and I want to have EXP 0 on before that, otherwise I'll do very little damage. Because as I said, 0 EXP scales your damage significantly on this version, for whatever reason. Whereas in the other final mix, the PSP final mix, it barely scaled your damage at all. In fact, I don't think it even did anything. So you just did literal chip damage everywhere. Uh, so yeah, you really want to be running on this version of the game if you want to run crit, because leveling up in crit is a lot slower. So here I am doing uh, some D-Link grinding in the forced fight. Basically, D-Links have levels, and I want to level them up. And what D-Links are is it, it's explained as like dimensional link or something like that basically like your heart is connected to the heart of your friends and so you gain access to some of their abilities or some similarly kingdom hearts sounding uh reasoning so just there i got one of those levels so i'm gonna get out of Vendy d link uh and try and get another one for aqua d link the aqua d link one isn't important but uh it's nice to have it's a quality of life improvement more than anything but I got the important one, so that's good. Didn't get walled by RNG. Level one for Ventus is haste, so all your attacks come out a lot faster. 
Yeah. It's going to be very useful for a lot of boss fights later on. Oh, not even and later on. Fight. The Literally the very next boss fight, the first guy, is uh, kind of mandatory to do Venn dealing for. So it doesn't look like I'm going to get Aqua Dealing here, so I'm going to revert. Uh, the reason for that is just because if I was to stay in the D-Link, I wouldn't get my D-Link gauge filled up as quickly because it would be draining still. And I'm probably going to need to do a bit of grinding outside of the forced fight just to fill that up anyway. But I didn't want to be killing every enemy on the bridge just to fill up my D-Link for the boss. So I could theoretically have gone for a couple more tries at the D-Link drop, but it would have been detrimental if I hadn't gotten it. So the, the main movement in this game is just whatever your character's dodge is. So in Terra's case, it is Slide, which is the fastest of the three characters' dodges, but it does have some other disadvantages later on to compensate, I suppose. Um... But yeah, so I'm just going to be spamming the slide whenever I have to move anywhere. Um, the main thing to note, though, is you shouldn't ever mash whatever dodge you're using. Because if you mash it, you'll get dropped inputs and you'll lose a bit of speed at the end of each input, I guess. And here I'm timing them poorly because I'm not used to playing on CRT, so that's my bad. But um, yeah... I guess you could think of it sort of like uh, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. I'm pretty sure they have a similar thing with their dodge roll, where if you try to mash it, you'll lose a lot of speed at the end of every roll. So there I messed up movement a little bit. Basically, sliding dash is going to be faster than dodging, but it has a bit of like recovery at the end. However, if you hit an enemy with Sliding Dash, it cancels that recovery out, I guess, for whatever reason. So you want to try and Sliding Dash through enemies in order to have less recovery at the end. You may also notice that I'm picking up a lot of chests that might seem kind of irrelevant. Unfortunately, Terra Crits, uh, I guess, run has a very tight money route. So even though I'm picking up all of these useless chests, I'm probably still going to end up being short on money somewhere. And then I just have to react to that and do my menus differently to compensate when that happens. So coming up here, you'll see what uh, haste Ven's D-Link ability does. Basically, all of my combos are going to come out faster, and that's going to fill up the command gauge faster. And when the command gauge is full, I'll use a finisher, and that'll kind of show off the main advantage of EXP Zero, is that it scales all of your command finishers damage really, really sharply, based on the number of hits that finisher has, usually. The way EXP Zero works is they increase the minimum damage that you can do in Final Mix HD, so multi-hit abilities really pack a punch. So the reason I did that the way I did there was so that I would be away from him when he went dark like that. Basically, you just don't want to get hit by that if you can avoid it. Got the stun just in time. So that was a perfect fight. Um, I'm really happy with that. That's one of the harder fights in the run, so I had to really concentrate. So coming up next, we're going into Dwarf Woodlands. Uh, Dwarf Woodlands doesn't really have that much in the way of interesting or unique fights. But what it does have is very unique movement. It's actually the only place in the game where I can move the way I'm going to on pretty much the second screen that you go into. So um, I guess just to talk about that, there's a type of command in this game called shot lock commands. Um, and how shot locks work is you hold the lock on button down and you will start charging up 
locks or shots or whatever onto whatever you point the, the reticle at. And most of them you fire shots of some kind, like uh, fireballs or something. But there are a couple where instead of firing a projectile, something more along the lines of this happens. So I can just get straight up here by abusing the shot lock command that Terra starts with and clear the room in basically seconds, which is really, really nice. It also allows me to get Flame Salvo, which is another shot lock that's more useful in fights, uh, a lot quicker than the intended way. The intended way you have to light up this furnace and steam cut starts bubbling out of this little steam vent thing and you have to jump on the steam and it's just slow. It's only useful to use that shot lock as I did in this area though, because it's the only area that has things like those pots spawned in that you can lock onto. Um, every other area, it'll be enemies and they have to, like you have to get near them for them to spawn in usually. Mr. Chest there, whoops. So here we're going to do some abusive sliding dash just to get this chest in the top right corner. Um, sliding dash kind of just like acts like you're on the ground even when you're in the air. So... That jump he just made to get up there is also not intended right now. You are meant to have high jump. But for some reason we can just jump. I'm fumbling my menus here because I'm not used to CRT, so my inputs are coming out before I press the buttons from my perspective. Oh, I forgot to buy things. So this fight is where having Aqua D-Link level 1 would have come in handy. Uh, essentially, I don't have a Magnet command, and Magnet will just draw all enemies into it, as the name would imply. And so because of that, I, I'm not only going to have a slower time of this forced fight, but it's also somewhat more dangerous. Ideally, I'll get the D-Link drop from one of these floods, but... It's all, uh, it's all luck, whether or not you get it. So yeah, because I don't have a magnet command, this is a lot slower. But fortunately, I got the D-Link drop before that next wave spawned. So that allows me to not be in danger of dying, which is always nice. And I'm actually going to revert and go back into Aqua D-Link. And the reason for that is it's impossible to get two consecutive D-Link drops if you don't do that. So I just wanted to give myself the chance of leveling it up again because that will make things faster a little later on into the run. So as you can see, when things aren't in a magnet, you're in danger of getting hit, basically. Because when they're in a magnet, they're spinning around, they can't attack or do anything. But when they're not in a magnet, they can hit you. And because we're level 1 on the hardest difficulty, it doesn't take very long to die. bad movement there, but that's fine. So coming up, we have Magic Mirror. Um, the D-Link level that I didn't get for Aqua would have come in handy in this boss fight. Uh, Aqua D-Link level 2 is slightly faster than the alternative, but it's not a huge deal. So essentially, Magic Mirror just has a couple of kind of random patterns that I'm going to try and stun him out of. And uh, whenever, whenever that happens... 
basically I get to do a certain amount of hits and then I'll knock him down and then I can hit him until he gets back up again and then he'll do another attack. And all I really want to do is try to keep poison on him for as long as possible because it's a damage over time. And at level 1, damage over times are a really nice resource since their damage is set. So there's no... There's no scaling with strength or magic or anything like that. They do the same amount of damage regardless of your stats. So each tick of poison is basically going to be doing more damage than any of my other commands as a result of that. So here I go into critical impact. The reason for that is just because it has the nicest combos for what I'm doing of any of the command styles I could be entering. Uh, there I got the worst possible attack. I essentially can't punish that at all because he won't stagger when I hit him. But it, it's not a, you know, fight ending thing, so... So again, I'm just trying to keep poison on him for as long as possible. And I should kill him here. The one bad thing about damage over time spells is they cannot land the killing blow on a boss. So you have to finish the boss with some other command, a shot lock, a regular attack hit. Basically anything that isn't damage over time. Oh no, I forgot a menu. So basically there, I had to re-enter Dwarf Woodlands to do a shop menu because every time you kill a boss, the shops level up. And it's really easy to forget because you're not actually going there to fight anything. And I'm kind of famous for forgetting menus. Even though I've done actually a lot of work routing this category, I just, I forget things all the time. So here I'm going to kill the wave of floods because they are kind of not really going to help me with anything. And then I'm actually going to intentionally die so that I can get back to the shop because that menu is incredibly important to the run. So these scrappers, the green guys, should be able to kill me pretty quickly. If they hit me, that is. There we go. So that'll allow me to press continue, which will take me back to the world map. Kinda sucks that I had to do that, but I've forgotten that menu in runs many times. I'm used to it. I know how to react. And the reason we needed the shop to level up is so that we can buy magnets and thunders, and then we won't have to rely on aqua dealing for our magnets and thunders. So I'm going to sell Quick Blitz, Sliding Dash, Potions, and Ethers. Ten money short of being able to do the faster menus. That's unfortunate. I don't have anything else I can sell, do I? Oh yeah, Poison. We don't need that anymore. Whoops. Forgot another part of the menu. Flame Salvo is going to be a lot stronger later on. Uh, yeah. As opposed to Sonic Sh Sonic Shadow, uh, just because it does a lot more hits. As we were mentioning before, multi-hit things are much stronger. 
the other thing about Flame Salvo that makes it more useful than Sonic Shadow is you get a lot more iframes uh, in vulnerability frames. So you can use it to tank attacks from bosses. And that's its primary use at level 1 because shot locks don't really do much damage at all at level 1. And the reason I needed to put it on there is to make sure the command itself levels up. And that means that I can charge it up faster. So I have more... Uh, easy access to those invulnerability frames. Thunder. So long. Gather. So mostly you want to be using commands for pretty much all of your damage. Um, attacks don't really do much. But sometimes if my useful commands are on cooldown or something like that, I will use regular attacks. So that, that's another thing to note, I guess, the commands cooldowns. Um, this game doesn't have an MP system like other Kingdom Hearts games. Instead, it's all based on commands, and your commands have reload times which you can alter with some abilities and that sort of thing. So, it's nice in that you have, I guess, an endless stream of abilities. You don't have to worry about a resource, but at the same time, because of the cooldowns, you can't spam all at once in the same way you could in Kingdom Hearts 1 or 2. So, with the cutscene skips, you can't press down as soon as you've paused, you have to wait a little bit. And what happened there was I kept trying to hit down to go to skip the cutscene, and it wasn't letting me input yet. It's a very common thing to see BBS runners fail cutscene skips. Here, I want to just use magnets and thunders and push enemies into the magnets where necessary because this is an escort mission and basically if Cinderella doesn't have enemies in her way she will keep running. If she does have enemies in her way she won't keep running. So I just want to kill the enemies before she gets to them and if I go into a command style which I would if I used my fire based command because I have the fire command style unlocked uh, that wastes time because it takes a little while to load in. Unfortunately, I got unlucky there. The shoegazers decided to put up their little barriers and that just meant that I couldn't really hit them or catch them in the magnet. So another thing is that Cinderella can either run or walk and that's completely RNG. Obviously, if she runs, that's faster than if she walks. So, I want her to be running constantly, if possible. Gather. These enemies are incredibly random in terms of what they do. Uh, they could all run at me at once, which is kind of ideal, or they could all run in one at a time and not let me get them in magnets. It's really not fun. But after that, the rest of it is really consistent, so... And here I'm just killing an extra enemy for command points, which is what levels up your commands. Because even though I'm not leveling, my commands still are. And you need your commands to level in order to meld them, which is just like you combine them and you get an ability that's a combination of the two. So if you combine two magnets, you get a stronger magnet. If you combine two thunders, you get a stronger thunder. And if you combine a fire with a sliding dash, you get a fire dash that sort of thing.
So here we have Symphony Master, another boss that I'm going to be using Vendi Link with haste for. Um, this fight is kind of random. He can either do absolutely nothing that I'm worried about and I kill him for free, or his instruments can attack me and cause all sorts of problems. So we're hoping for the former, but you never know with this boss. So basically, whenever we're in Vendi Link, you're going to hear me mashing X. I'm not sure if the mic is picking it up, but that's essentially the strategy for Vendi Link. Just mash X. So far, so good with uh, regards to the RNG thing, but you never know. So that was a that was a perfect fight, which again, that's just completely random. What I have to do is easy. It's just a matter of whether or not the instruments attack me. So the next world we have is Radiant Garden. Uh, before then, though, I'm going to be doing a quick menu to meld some commands together. So that'll, I guess, show the, the combining commands that I was talking about before. Another thing to note with melds is there are crystals in this game. And if you add a crystal to the meld, it gives the... Uh, it gives the... It gives the resulting command an additional effect. And depending on what crystals I've gotten as drops will determine what crystals I use because drops are all obviously random. So here, ideally, I would have a fleeting crystal, but I don't think I do. No, I don't. I almost used the wrong crystal there. So I'm going to put a pulsing crystal with this blizzard to give myself leaf bracer, which means that whenever I use a healing ability, uh, it just won't... It, it'll give me iframes while I'm healing, basically. I'm putting soothing crystals on the other two to give myself item boost and HP boost, both pretty self-explanatory. Uh, one boosts the effectiveness of items, one gives you more health. So now we have a Magnera and a Thundara, which is the same as what Aqua has in her D-Link commands, but her finisher is also a really useful AoE. So I'll still be using Aqua D-Link for a couple more forced fights before we are at the point where I'm self-sufficient enough to where it's actually better not to use her. We've been through a few worlds and menus so far, and you're probably wondering why he hasn't changed his Keyblade. The reason being is that because you're at level 1, your stats really don't matter, so changing to a stronger Keyblade makes absolutely no difference. Yeah, the only difference you can accomplish at level 1 by changing your Keyblade is the reach of the Keyblade, and that only affects your regular X attack combos, and since those are kind of useless as it is, we really don't care what Keyblade we have on. The other thing that does make a difference is your magic stat, but the only thing that your magic stat changes is your healing spells. So it'll mean Cure heals me for more and stuff like that. And so you might think, oh, well, wouldn't you want a Keyblade with stronger magic so you can heal better? And the answer is basically no. Uh, the the only thing we use healing for is to get ourselves above 1 HP whenever we're in the later part of the game. Because in the later part of the game, we will have second chance and once more, which effectively means you have either 1 HP or 2 HP. Uh, that That's how it works. If you have 2 HP, you don't get one hit. And I'll explain that as we uh, as we get to it. But yeah, how the stats work at level 1, or with EXP 0 on, I should say, 
is the XP zero will scale your damage to a set amount unless your stats would scale it higher than that. So let's say we were level 15. EXP zero would be in effect and we would do the same damage as if we were at level one. But if you were level 72 and you had EXP zero equipped, you would do more damage than at level one because at that point you would have broken the strength threshold that it scales you to. So now that I have Aqua D-Link level 2, which honestly I didn't notice that I got, so I must have gotten it at the end of the fight, um, I have access to Mind Square and a different finisher in her command style or whatever. So Mind Square is a really useful defensive offensive spell. Like, it, it kind of does both, in that it'll knock enemies into the air whenever it hits them. So you can kind of stand inside the mine square and you're effectively safe from anything that could be charging at you. Which I am going to show off right here. They'll still hit me, but they then get knocked back and it just means that I can use other commands while they're recovering. So in this next room, I'm going to be doing a little bit of grinding for both money and the chance at some crystals. Um, basically, once again, because the money route for this category is really, really tight, I want to try and get as a bit of extra money. And I also want to give myself the chance at getting a couple of crystals that I'm going to need later on. I didn't get any pulsing crystals there, which is what I was after, but that's fine. And here I want a fleeting crystal, but if I don't get one, I don't get one. It is also, as I said, about the money, so... Whoops. Oh, I don't have air slide on. Whoops. Basically, I should have uh, at some point menued on a command that gives me an in-air dodge, and that would have allowed me to cover that gap, but I obviously forgot the menu. So there I got a slow, which is nice as a money drop, but... It's not the crystal that I wanted. So now we have a Magnera and two Thundaras. So we actually have a little bit more in the way of uh, AOE commands than Aqua D-Link. So here I need to have the right command keyed because we're going into Trinity Armor, which is 
in terms of doing it properly or optimally, I guess, a very uh, tight fight in terms of timing, at least at the very start. So I want to be getting out my early commands as quickly as possible to make sure I hit the right, uh, the right cycles, I suppose you could call them. In most BBS categories, this fight is actually considered the worst. Yeah, yeah, this is a fight that all three characters have to deal with. And it's considered to be one of the worst fights for a couple of those categories, Venkrit being key among them. Terra actually has a pretty easy time of it, though. And I didn't get as many hits off with that Thunder Surge as I wanted to, so I'm not going to be able to do this completely correctly. But, and I messed up the timing of that Firestorm finisher as it was, so... Basically, I want to be hitting his full body with my Firestorm finishes because they do a lot of damage, because they do a lot of hits. And you can see that there. They just shred health bars. Unfortunately, it's a really awkward command to aim, so it's not really useful in many places. Like orbs as well, this is another fight where you, you do want your party members to help, but it's not as important as the orbs. Yeah. That's one of the things that makes the Ven crit Trinity armor so notoriously bad, though is that he relies on his party members in order to do the fight even slightly quickly. Whereas Terra can kind of stand on his own two feet, mostly because of Firestorm. But Ven doesn't have Firestorm. Also, I'm very glad that I have two HP boosts, because uh, I would have died there otherwise. My Blizzard knocked me back into... Uh, knocked me back into his laser. That was a pretty good fight. It was a bit below optimal, like it was a little bit slow, but it was good. And essentially any fight that doesn't kill me is a good fight. Because this is crit level 1 and we're playing as Terra, who is actually probably the hardest character to do crit level 1 with. So, um... Yeah, anywhere where I don't die, that was a good fight. Um... Obviously, there's a difference between a good fight and a great fight and an optimal fight, but any fight that doesn't kill me is good. Ooh, I got an Ignite as a drop. That's really nice. Basically, getting that Ignite as a drop completely removes any money-related problems I could have later on. Or right now, even. In fact, I believe that I have enough money that I can actually skip a shop menu, so that's really nice. Thanks to that Ignite drop. And that's it for me on the station. Uh, Dactyly will be taking over for the next couple of hours. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed this Kingdom Hearts run. I forgot a meld there. That's my bad. So here we are melding Renewal Block with Attack Haste. Renewal Block is block, but you get healed when you block things. So, very useful. So now we have Ignite, which are the primary damage over time spell that we'll be using in this run. Um, as I explained earlier, damage over time spells deal a set amount regardless of your stats. So they're very useful at level 1 for that reason. And Ignite is just the most convenient one to use. 
Uh, I believe the amount they do is based on the boss's HP, because it seems like they do more damage to bosses with more health. But I could be wrong on that point. There are a lot of things about this game that I don't understand myself, even as a relatively experienced runner of it. This so, game is very strange mechanics-wise. Yeah, a lot of this game doesn't make sense. So this boss is Brag. Basically, I'm going to be spamming Ignites, or rather keeping Ignites active on him as much as possible, and reflecting his attacks back at him with my block. Those are effectively the two main points of this fight. His patterns are consistent, but what he does is kind of random. So... I just need to be able to react to his odd mechanics, I suppose. So what I did there was I just jumped and ignited him, and that cancels that attack where he was running around. Which, it's a really annoying attack to deal with, so that's... It's nice that we can just cancel it like that. That was a good fight. Nice fight. Brag can go really wrong really easily. What I have to do isn't all that difficult, but just due to the nature of how random his actions seem to be sometimes, and the fact that you get killed in like three shots, and he's shooting usually four or more at a time, it's really easy for that fight to go horribly wrong. So coming up we have Rumble Racing, which is basically an auto-scroller. You can lose maybe five seconds due to your execution, but it's very auto-scrolly in nature. It's effectively just like a really dumbed down Kingdom, uh, Kingdom Karts. It's a, a really dumbed down Mario Kart. Um, there are no items or anything like that. Your speed is set at a certain point, so it's just cutting corners well that matters break turning that sort of thing So again, this is essentially an auto-scroller. There's not really much to talk about. I don't know if we have any donations at this point, but if we do, you're welcome to read them out, Dax. So one of the main things that determines how fast your rumble racing is, I guess, is whether or not you can cut past those tornadoes. And then obviously if you get hit by them, that's really slow. I would intentionally hit one to demonstrate how slow it is, but that would lose me time, so I'm not going to do that. Yeehaw.
So uh, while we're doing this auto scroller, I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, the rest of the Kingdom Hearts people at ASM. Bunch of really great guys. Um, and uh, Liquid and Saiyans will both be doing Kingdom Hearts runs on this same station not too long from now. I don't know if they're right after me because the schedule's changed up a bit, but I definitely uh, strongly recommend you watching both of their runs. Uh, they are running 1.5 and 2FM, so you should definitely check those out if you have the time. And check the schedule to see when they are. Both really great runners, really great commentators. Definitely well worth a watch. You can find the schedule at uh, hororo.org slash ozspeedrunmarathon slash avcon2. Um, so after Greg, we'll have Softman running Duke Nukem 3D and Quake, uh, followed by the Kingdom Hearts runs that Greg was just mentioning. Saiyans with uh, 1.5 and Liquid with 2FM Critical. So there I got a 201.98 on the, the race. An optimal race is just barely subbed to, sub 2, but in almost every run you will see a 201 of some kind. So I didn't lose any time there, really. If you want to compare to like optimal best possible time, I lost 2 seconds, maybe 3. So here, because I have two Magnets and two Thunders of my own, or Magneras and Thundaras, it's actually better for me to just not use Aqua D-Link at all. And that is the case for the remainder of the forced fights throughout the run. So, goodbye Aqua D-Link, we don't need you anymore. Thanks for your help earlier. Yeehaw. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, using one magnet for each wave and then alternating between using both Thundaras and using my command style finisher because both do effectively the same amount of damage or close to it. So it just means I can always have the commands that I need to have up for the next wave of enemies. So I'm never sat waiting for reload times or anything like that. So coming up we have 10 rounds. 10 rounds is pretty straightforward. Magnet Thunder spam, nothing too different. But at the very end of 10 rounds we have a wave of Jellyfish. And anyone who knows this game, even people who have played it casually, would probably know that the person who made this game had a phobia of Jellyfish or something because all of the Jellyfish enemies suck. They're all horrible. And as a result of that, in the very final round, there is a good chance that I will die to something completely out of my control. So hopefully that won't happen, but I just thought I should warn that there is a possibility. If it does happen, I have to do 10 rounds all over again from the very start. So that's always fun. So something to mention here. Um, when you have more than one enemy in a magnet, thunders will do more damage. The reason I believe that is, is because they're spinning around more rapidly, so they're getting hit by more of the thunders hitboxes. But I don't really know. Again, this game's mechanics work really oddly. And you'll see that coming up soon. I'm going to fight a single enemy by itself, and thunder is going to do next to nothing. So as a result of that, I need to throw in the command style finisher. Or the finish command. Just an idea, it could also be the hitbox is pushing them in and out of the magnet. Yeah, that's how it works in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, I believe. Um, or Kingdom Hearts 2, at least. So you would think that immediately, or uh, initially. 
but the reason I think it, it's the Thunder doing more damage is because whenever you Magnet into Thundara with, say, Aqua, you will go into the command style that correlates with Thunder over Magnet. So that makes me believe that it's the Thunder doing extra damage, not the Magnet. But obviously I can't say for sure, because this is BBS, the game doesn't make sense a lot of the time. And then here, to contrast that single enemy, these guys will take a lot of damage from the Thunders. Ooh, and I just went into Firestorm. That was accidental, but... It doesn't really matter. It just lost a little bit of time because it loaded in or whatever. Unfortunately, I cannot use Firestorm to kill the wave of jellyfish. I wish I could, because all command style finishes have, uh have iframes, but they will just dodge all of the hits if I try. So all I can really do is mash dodge and hope I don't get killed. So I got lucky there, essentially. I did not die because I got lucky. Um, I can't put it down to anything else because whether or not they charge at you is completely random, and if they charge at you, you usually don't have time to react and you'll just die. So, because I did my menus in a weird order, uh, my shop menus specifically, I have to do this menu here, when usually it would have been in a different spot, but that's fine. Again, my down input got eaten because I tried to do it too early. That happens a lot in menus and cutscene skips and other things in this game. So this is Zack. Uh, you fight Zack twice in Terracrit. The first time, he's pretty easy to deal with. You just kind of run away from him and spam Ignites. And he won't really bother you too much. You can walk up to his face and attack him as well, and you'll get a little bit of extra damage and save maybe 15 seconds across the course of the fight. But in a marathon run, I don't trust myself to do that without dying. <laughs> It is kind of hard to hear myself think in this room, to be completely honest. I was gonna say, I don't know if you caught that one, but the Naruto tournament is happening. No, I, I think you mean the Naruto Shippuden <laughs> tournament. I think you'll find that's, that's what tournament. Uh, Naruto Shippuden is very different to Naruto Shippuden. Unfortunately, I know a little bit of Japanese, so... So, because we were using a damage over time spell as our primary source of damage there, I just had to shot lock at the end to finish him off. Because, as I said before, you cannot land a killing blow with damage over time. You have to land a killing blow with something else. And here we're going to see the iframes or invulnerability frames of Flame Salvo come in real handy. Because at the very start, Zack 2 is going to use a DM or a desperation move and it's incredibly painful to try and dodge. So instead, we just charge up the shot lock, take a hit there, and then go into Vendi Link. And I've done everything in a very specific way to get him into a corner, because basically he doesn't DM when he's in a corner most of the time. And then I'm just going to loop him with Vendi Link. This is probably one of the most technical fights in the entire run, or the entire game even, but it's not really hard, it's just technical. You have to execute everything within a very small time window. So again, because he's in the corner, he won't use that desperation move that he used at the start again. Most likely, it's possible, but it doesn't happen very often at all. So I'm able to just loop him like this, because I know he'll just keep doing the jump slash after I use my finisher. And 
And then after the third combo, strike raid, and he's dead. Nice fight. Now we're going into deep space, which is honestly a relatively boring world, but after that we are getting really close to the end game, which is where this run gets really, really action-packed, I guess. Uh, Terra Crit is notorious for its incredibly difficult end game, and most people are scared to run the category for that reason. So I always get excited at this point of the run because I get to go to the really challenging end game, which is what I run the category for, essentially. Here, though, we have jellies, except these jellies don't attack you. They're the only jelly enemies in the game that aren't really a problem at all. Um, so I'm just going to be mashing X. This is like a mini game, I guess. All three characters have a mini game like this in Deep Space, and Terra's is by far the easiest to deal with. So I guess he does have one saving grace in that his bike mini game doesn't suck. So here we have another forced fight, more magnet thunder spam, uh, nothing out of the usual. So here I'm starting to feel the fact that I didn't get any uh, fleeting crystal drops. And what that means is that I don't have any magic hastes, which makes your magic commands reload more quickly. And as a result, I am having to wait on commands quite a bit. That's RNG. It's not really something that I have any control over. But it just makes that forced fight a little bit slower. That's the only real forced fight in the run where it makes a difference, though, so... Well, the only real fight in general, because for bosses you use attack commands or D-Links or something else. You don't really use magic much. So, coming up in one of the next rooms here, we have some more nice-looking movement tech. Um, this is another room where you could abuse Sonic Shadow to get places you're not supposed to be able to get. But because we have taken it off to get Flame Salvo for invulnerability frames in bosses, instead we're going to be using Cinderella's D-Link, as it has a command that is a lot like a Surge, um, but for whatever reason her command Surge goes way further or gives you more height or something when you're in the air. Not too sure exactly what causes it, but it's going to allow us to break the progression of this room a little bit, and it looks really cool. So I'm going to run into the back right corner because there is a wellspring crystal there, and I need that. And then I'm going to go into Cinderella D-Link and use something called Enchanted Step, which is effectively just a Surge command. By doing that while locked onto this turret, we just kind of fly up through the room. In order to do that same thing with regular Surges, you need to have three. Uh, three Fire Surges, Thunder Surges, or if you're playing Aqua, Barrier Surges. So coming up, we have Experiment 221, also known as Sparky or Pikachu, depending on who you talk to. This is another fight where I'm just going to be spamming Ignite because I don't really have any other way of dealing damage to him while being safe. 
there are a lot of bosses like that in this run where there's no easily accessible way of dealing a good amount of damage, so you just revert to Ignite Spam. might get gun skip. So basically there's a phase where he goes into the guns at the side of the room and it's completely random but you can skip it. Okay I didn't get gun skip I don't think. I almost did but yeah. For whatever reason, Sparky can sometimes like randomly skip attacks or you can stagger him sometimes, but other times you can't. It's a really weird fight. And so because of that, sometimes you can skip this phase, but it's random whether or not you're able to. It only loses 20 seconds or something, so it's not like a run killing thing especially given it happens so infrequently that you don't really want to call it time loss as much as time save if you get it. So there we uh, we saw what the HP boosts are there for. Basically if I didn't have those I would have died to that attack. Same goes for that one. And that Sparky down. We have one more fight that we're going to be spamming Ignite for, which is Peter Pan, the boss of this next world. Uh, and then after that, all of the fights are really uh, intensive. So, we're getting into the more interesting part of the run, which just so happens to be the tail end of the run. Someone just opened a can of Coke and I am jealous. <laughs> so this forced fight that I'm about to go into has the only enemies, regular unversed enemies in the game that are not affected by Magnet. As you can imagine, that causes problems. So instead I'm going to be using Ignites to kill them and praying to God that they don't kill me because there's no real easy way of controlling them. The one advantage that they do have is that if you hit them with any direct command, I guess, they will get staggered. So that makes things a little nicer, but it's not enough. I very much dislike these monkeys. Yeah, I, I also dislike the monkeys. They're probably my least favorite unversed in the game. And that's saying a lot because hair raises exist. So that first guy by himself isn't too bad, but then we have three of them at once. That should be one of them dead. There is also a thing that I can do called Ignite Glitch. Which basically, as you saw there, I switched targets right as the Ignite was about to land. And that just means that it hits both targets. I didn't die to the monkeys, so that was a good fight. So now we're going to do the final shop of the run. I'm going to buy Thunder Surges, Cures, and Balloon Letters. Thunder Surges are our primary damaging command for the final bosses. Uh, cures, obviously, are to keep myself alive. And then Balloon Letters are for a specific strat that I use for two of the bosses. And I'll explain that all as I get to it. But I'm going to sell most of everything else. 
There are a couple of commands that I have to keep just so that I can do melds and get abilities, but... You'll notice he's selling commands with abilities on them, but that's because once they reach the max level, you get to keep the ability, regardless of whether you equip the command. Yeah, exactly. So once a c an ability with a or a command with an ability attached reaches its highest level, you essentially don't have to keep the ability on anymore because, as Midget said, uh, you get the ability automatically without having the command equipped. And there, I'm putting on Sonic Impact. I'd just like to say for the record, I hate Sonic Impact, but I have to use it for movement here. It is a really horrible command. Basically, it's just something that attaches onto your slides and gives you a bit of extra distance. But the problem it has is that it has no iframes at all, unlike the slide, which is entirely iframes. So when you're just trying to mash out dodges or something like that, you could accidentally use a Sonic Impact and get yourself killed. So I cannot stand the command for that reason. <coughs> In a lot of ways, any command that doesn't give iframes is kind of useless in this game. Because the bosses don't have set patterns or set cycles like they do in other Kingdom Hearts games. You don't have revenge values to manipulate or anything like that. You just have a boss with a bunch of things that it can randomly do, and you have to react. So, in order to be able to deal damage to a boss, you kind of need your damaging spells to also be able to be used uh, defensively, and vice versa. So Peter Pan has a loop. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do the loop right now, but because I don't have magic hastes, it might break with midway through. Or I could just get one hit at the start trying to walk up to him. That also happens. This is one of the few bosses in the game that can one-hit you. There Not aren't bad. actually many. You won't stop me. Fire. Same thing just happened again. There we go. There we go, that's Peter Pan. Not a difficult fight, but I apparently messed up the loop a few times there, so... So here we have some jellies again. These ones can kill you at the start, but they don't usually. Um, as soon as I get the first magnet off, though, I'm completely safe. Because as long as I stand under a magnet, they'll die before they can do anything. The one fortunate thing about jellies is that they die in one hit from anything. So now we're going into the final part of the run. 
The next boss is Ericus. He is very random, uh, but he's not that difficult, I suppose. The main problem is that once he gets to a certain HP threshold, he can randomly use his desperation moves, and they take a really long time, and that he can also randomly block any one of your attacks at any point in time and then counterattack. So I have to play around those two things. So here I'm going to meld Magnega and Blizzaga, both with uh, Second Chance and Once More. What Second Chance and Once More do essentially is Second Chance means you cannot be one hit. So you cannot go from above one health to below one health is how it works in one single attack. Um, so say you're on three health, you get attacked, dealt four damage, you'll be on one health. And once more is the same thing, except instead of being a single hit thing, it's for combos. So, say you're on 4 health and you get hit for 2 damage, then for another 2 damage, you'll be on 1 health. And that's what I was talking about earlier on Into the Run. Anything above 1 health is 2 health. That's kind of how I explain it. And so that's why it doesn't matter how much my cures are doing. As long as they are healing me to above one health, my HP pool is effectively the same as if it was full. So the thing I'm going to do at the very start of this fight is I'm going to use my shot lock command and the reason for that is I'm trying to bait him into using something I can reflect back at him. Uh, that would theoretically be the fastest way of killing him, just repeatedly doing that, but it's so random that it's not worth gambling on. The only reason I do it here is because my surges are on cooldown, so as soon as they're off cooldown I'll just use them. And he did use something I can reflect, so that's lucky, I guess. There's the random counter-attack I was talking about. But fortunately, because of my HP boosts, I can tank one of those and still be above one health. But... very unlikely that he'll use an attack that fast. Oh my god, I hit continue. So that's another example of your down input getting eaten because you did it earlier than you can. Uh, so that just means I have to go into the world again. Unfortunately, that happens a lot. So again, this fight is really random. Uh, if I die, it's still my fault, but it, it's usually as a result of a bad set of circumstances that are outside my control. That being said, every death is avoidable, so I can't say it's the game's fault, because it isn't. It is my fault. There aren't many bosses that have unavoidable deaths, but there are a couple.
Oh no. I might have just gotten myself killed. No, we're good. He's being really difficult right now. So he's at the HP threshold to where he can use his desperation moves now, so I kind of want to try and keep staggering him as much as possible. But if he does that, I don't really have a choice because I have to heal. So here I'm just going to shot lock to both tank this desperation move and deal a bit of damage while he's doing it. That's unfortunate. Okay, so you can block those fire pillars. I don't know why, but you can. And here I'm gonna have to dodge this one. So again, they're pretty easy to dodge, but they're just really slow. And as you can see, he can just continually use them. He doesn't care. Sometimes you can get four in a row, five in a row, six in a row, and then other times he won't use any at all for the entire fight. But that's Ericus. So we have three more boss fights, and then that's the end of the run. So here I'm going to do one last menu. I'm going to change a Surge into Balloon Letters, and I'm going to take off Sonic Impact, because I don't like it. The Madman National Cosplay Competition starts in 15 minutes in the main hall. That's the Madman National Cosplay Competition in 15 minutes in the main hall. This area with tornadoes, if one of the tornadoes runs into you, you get put into a fight. You want to avoid all the tornadoes, but they are drawn to you. The weird thing about it is is that if you get one coming to towards you, I think this is right anyway, uh, the others won't draw as much. It's only the main one, is that correct? So how it works is you can only have one coming towards you at once and they gradually speed up over time. So effectively what you want to do is you want to continually attract a different one because that'll reset the speed of the tornado. Meaning that you won't have one flying at you at a million miles an hour that you can't avoid at all. But Terra is also just so fast in his general movement that you don't really have to worry about anything. But for Aqua and Ven, dodging those tornadoes can actually be somewhat difficult at times.
So here we are going to see the only real example of why EXP0 is broken in this game that you can see in Terra Crit. If I pull everything off correctly, I should effectively one-hit this boss coming up, but we'll see, and I'll let actions speak for themselves. But what I will say is the reason I'm jump-hitting this guy is because the D-Link I'm about to go into, uh, basically its mechanic is it, it charges up the command gauge faster if you hit from in the air. So, that's why I'm jump hitting. Other than that, I'm gonna let it speak for itself. This guy is also really random. He dodges whenever he feels like it. And that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. The moment Ericus comes into the fray, everything gets more difficult. This strategy for this boss fight can be really difficult at times, and really easy at others. It just depends on what the bosses do. If Xehanort wasn't there, it would be easy, but he can cause problems sometimes. Okay, now I have it charged up, so I'm going to force him to use an attack where he can't dodge while he's in it. Okay. And there goes his health bar. <laughs> so basically, command style finishes, as we explained earlier, um, every hit has like a minimum amount of damage in command style finishes because of EXP zero. That's one of the things that it does with scaling. So anything that has a lot of hits does a lot of damage. And that particular finisher has the most hits of any finisher in the game. So that's why it's so ridiculously broken. But that's the only place in this run where I can actually use it. And I just got bad RNG right off the bat, lovely. Basically everything this guy does is fine as long as he doesn't do that specific attack. Keyblade Storm it's called. And the reason we use Vendi Link here is just because it's fast. Like, it is the fastest way of dealing damage to this guy. It's not for a loop or anything like that. It just does more damage than any of our other options. If you whiff the final hit of the finisher, like I did there, it can actually be a good thing, because whenever this guy gets knocked into the air, he teleports away. And that's one of the reasons that, say, Sword Bill, which I used for the previous boss, doesn't work on him, and a lot of other strategies don't work on him. Because Sword Bill, the initial hit, knocks them into the air, and then there's a little bit of a delay before you start actually doing damage. So, because of that, he would teleport away before I got to one-hit him. He can also just teleport away because he feels like it, though, so... So I'm gonna get one more finisher out here, and then I'm gonna run out of D-Link, and I'll just finish him off with surges. I went to revert manually, and then it did it for me. Nice. Nice fight. Now we have the hardest story boss in the game. And I say story boss because there are like super bosses that you unlock after beating the game. Obviously those are gonna be harder, but uh... This is the hardest story boss, by far. Amazing music though. Oh yeah, really good music. I'm gonna concentrate really hard here, but basically my primary ways of dealing damage are punishing his attacks with surges, which surges have full iframes, so I need to time the surge so it finishes just after his attacks so that he can't block or anything, and reflecting his shots back at him. Enough. 
slow reaction there. That's my bad. There we go. So because I didn't move there, uh, once more was active throughout that whole thing, sometimes you can make it last way longer than it seems like it should by just not pressing anything. Just so you saw one of the more annoying things about this boss, he can heal himself. He can only heal a limited number of times though, so... So I didn't punish that correctly, but I didn't die either, so... So here is his main desperation move, Meteors. Meteors sucks. It's slow and it's kind of random whether or not you'll be at one health, but they shouldn't ever kill you, so... So now that he's in his third phase, he shouldn't be healing anymore, but it, he still can, it's just very unlikely. This is probably the most annoying move he has. I call it the Air Guitar, because that's what I thought of when I first saw it, but it's called Ultima Cannon. Time on last hit, correct? Yeah, time on last hit. I love lingering hitboxes. Good. Oh. I really thought I was going to die at the end there, but that was a really good run. That was a very good run. Sub 130 is quite difficult to achieve in this run. That was the fifth ever Sub 130. Three of them, including this one, have been me, and two of them have been by the world record holder, Sonic Shadow Silver 2. All right, well, I don't know what we have coming up next. I think it's one of Softman's runs, but thank you all for watching, and uh, yeehaw. Yeehaw indeed. Good job, uh, Greg, on that great uh, Kingdom Hearts run. Next up, we have Softman running Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, also, feel free to check out Station 1, where they're about to get started with Donkey Kong Country, I believe. <laughs>